Hey everybody, John Skiba here. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you three small things that you can do that are gonna make a huge impact on you winning your deck collection case. But first, if this is your first time here to my YouTube channel, go ahead and click subscribe. That way you get notified each and every week when I put out valuable tips and strategies to help you deal with your serious debt problem. All right, let's talk about some small things that you can do in your debt collection case. We're talking about if you've been sued by a debt buyer, like a Midland Funding, Portfolio Recovery, uh, and even original creditors, maybe Capital One, American Express. Maybe you're finding yourself dealing with this debt collection lawsuit and you're not sure what you need to do. It can be overwhelming. I totally get that. What you may not realize is that often these cases uh, will turn and you know depend on whether you win or lose will be uh, based upon something really small. One little small step that you did correctly that the other side didn't can result in you winning your case. So in this video, I wanna share with you three things that you can do that may result in you winning your case over the junk debt buyer or over the original creditor. Step number one is to file an answer to the lawsuit. Now, I know this seems really basic. You may be saying to yourself, of course, I'm gonna file an answer. I got served with the lawsuit. I have a specific time to file a response to the court. I'm gonna do that. Well, if that's your uh, train of thought, then you're better than 95% of the people who get sued by debt collectors. Nationwide, that's the statistic. 95% of debt collection cases go to a default judgment. Sometimes that's because they didn't get served correctly, but a lot of times it's because people get served, they don't know what to do, they don't do anything, and they end up with a default judgment. So if you want to increase your chances of winning your case, uh, more than 95% of the people who are getting sued, all you have to do is file an answer. And the good thing is, the answer may be the most simple document that you're gonna to have to submit uh, during this debt collection lawsuit process. The answer is really just you responding to the specific allegations that are contained in the complaint or the petition of the debt collector. They're gonna provide the court with a complaint or a petition with a bunch of numbered paragraphs. You just need to go through those numbered paragraphs and state whether you admit or deny the allegations that they have in those individual numbered paragraphs. The answer is not your time to tell your side of the story. It's not the time to offer a settlement proposal. It's just time for the court to see, is there an actual dispute? Do you agree or disagree with what it is that the debt collector is alleging? If you disagree with it, then we have a dispute that the court needs to decide and the case will move forward. So filing that answer and doing it timely is the most important step of all of these. Because if you don't do that step, the case is over, you're done. I'm gonna put a note, uh, a link down in the notes. I do have a little tutorial that'll show you how to draft your own answer if you are sued by a debt collector and you wanna see how that's done. Okay, the second thing that I'm gonna recommend that you do is object to telephonic appearances of their witnesses. Now, particularly with, with junk debt buyers, but even just regular original creditors like Wells Fargo or Chase, when they go to court, they often will have ask the court to allow their witnesses to appear over the telephone. This is because, you know, like say Midland Funding, for instance, their witnesses, most of them are in San Diego or they might be in Minnesota. Well, if you're in a place like where I live in Arizona, uh, they don't wanna fly their witness in to deal with a trial where there's a minimal amount of money involved. I should say one thing, the little asterisk to all of this, I'm recording this during COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the world's upside down right now, and it's very difficult to get a, a, a you know, to really get a, a, an objection to a telephonic witness sustained uh, because most courts are requiring everybody, even you maybe to appear over the phone. But in a normal world, when things get back to normal, if a debt collector, debt buyer, original creditor, if they file a motion with the court saying, hey, we're going to trial, we want our witness to appear over the phone, you can file an objection to that uh, because the rules of procedure in pretty much every state out there require that the witnesses, that they come into court to be able to testify, that there's gotta be a really good reason why the court would allow them to appear over the phone. Because trust me, when you have a witness in court, it's totally different than when you have a witness over the phone. It's super hard to go over documents when they're on the phone. It's tough to see their body language, to see if they're telling the truth, to see if they know exactly what it is that they're testifying about. But here, here, here's the, the big picture when it comes to objecting to uh, having their witness appear telephonically. If you can get the court to sustain your objection, meaning they're saying, hey, we're not gonna, we're not gonna allow them to appear over the phone. They're gonna actually have to come into the courthouse and testify a lot of times the debt buyers and the debt collectors will just dismiss. 
because they are not going to fly in a witness uh, to do that. I've had it happen on a few occasions, uh, and I say a few, literally a handful, and I've handled hundreds of trials against junk debt buyers. Uh, if you can get the court to sustain that objection, a lot of times your case may be dismissed altogether because they can't proceed without a witness, or they may be willing to settle for a much lower amount. So the second tip is to file an objection to any request they have to have their witnesses appear over the telephone. Third thing is to uh, is kind of a very basic, simple thing, uh, as a lot of these are. You know, a lot of these are going to be uh, these aren't real deep substantive legal type things, but these are things that I have won more cases than I want to admit. <laughs> I've won cases on these three little simple things here. The last one is to just to be on time to any court hearings that the court is scheduled. Sometimes there's little scheduling conferences or status conferences, or maybe a trial management conference. Uh, they may set it for trial. Regardless of what type of hearing it is, make sure that you are on time. If you are on time, and they're ready to go and the other side doesn't show up, the court will often just dismiss the case. Now, you may be saying to yourself, you know, why would they be late to trial? Trust me, they're late to trial, they're late to hearings. Most debt collection law firms are handling thousands of cases and they do it with relatively few attorneys. And so they're often running from one thing to the next. If you are on time, the other side is not, you can even ask the court to dismiss it rather than having the whole court sit around and waste everybody's time. The court sees thousands and tens of thousands of these cases. Uh, they're often willing to dismiss if the other side doesn't show up. The little thing you gotta understand there though is the opposite is also true. If you don't show up on time, I can promise you this, judgment will be entered almost immediately. So make sure you're on time, that you're ready to go. And if they don't show up on time, ask for the court to dismiss the case. So I hope that those three things are very helpful. Again, uh, briefly just to file an answer with the court. That's the first step that you have to do if you wanna have any chance of winning your case. The second one is to object to any telephonic request or request for telephonic appearances by their witnesses. And the third one is just to be on time. Uh, those three things, believe it or not, after all the complex evaluations and talking about the rules of evidence and different documents, those may be the things that make the difference. I hope that's helpful. If you want to learn more about how to defend yourself in a debt collection lawsuit, go ahead and check out the other videos here on my site. I appreciate you watching today.